Hey friends, welcome to Lions Live. Uh, new format, more new show here. Uh, times are changing, that's for sure. Uh, my name's Skip Roberts. Got the big dude Stephen Davis here with us tonight, and uh, uh, unfortunately, Jimmy, uh, the Grizz Kennedy, cannot make it with us here tonight. Um, uh, prayers out to him and his family. They have a health health matter going on with them, so we trust for them to uh, uh, get better here uh, sooner rather than later. And uh, uh, Yakov, hopefully he'll be able to join us in here, Stefan. I uh, hope things are going well with you and your family and uh, here to talk uh, about uh, Penn State football here. Uh, kind of a uh, rough past weekend, buddy. That's what else can we say? Yeah, I mean, it was rough. I mean, we were playing one of the top teams uh, in the country. Uh, it looked like that. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm happy about. What I'm happy about is, is that we never quit. You know, we found out about a lot of people. Uh, we found out what our weaknesses were, but we also saw some people play all the way to the end. Our, our wide receiver, and I saw that you uh, were texting me, uh, Dotson was the guy that did some damage and did the best he could, three touchdown receptions against a uh, secondary like Ohio State. You know, that's a uh, playoff bound, I think. Uh, I think says a lot. I think that Part of what we also have to understand is we're just starting out and we've had some misfortune, you know, no excuses, but, um, you know, we did not play a good football game. We played a competitive one, which you can't keep doing. It's nice that you played a competitive game. Those games, as you know, Skip, are whiteout games. You know, I mean, all Ohio State games uh, that I've ever been to at home, uh, and we did win one, I think, in 16. Uh, you know, with the uh, block field goal and the return for a touchdown, whiteout games, and um, we where we really underperformed, if you were to ask me, and, I, and I'm really upset to say this because, you know, I take up for the big guys regardless of what happened, but on both sides of the offensive line, we were we were soundly beaten, beaten. Yeah, we, we were soundly beaten. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll put it that way. Won't put it to any me. Too many demonstratives in there. We were soundly beaten up front, and um, that can't continue to happen. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, I think I sent out the message, buddy. Uh, we used the word that we have probably haven't heard for a while, um, and it's called a shellacking. Um, yeah, you know, we we got it pretty hard, buddy. And um, you know, I was flipping back here. Uh, actually, is the point? I think it was right after that. One of the first plays, right after a kickoff, and I'm I'm looking at it right now here. I have a uh, queued up on my uh, my screeners right after the kickoff, and uh, you probably hear it in the background here. It's like right after halftime. Get that kickoff, and you know, this is watching it again on on a Big Ten and sixty. First play, for, no third quarter. First play, and it's the play when <laughs> when we handed off the running back, and and both the quarterback and running back were tackled to get us. Uh, it was uh, first and ten. Yeah, 1455 left in the third quarter. So I was just like, uh, just it was just one of those nights, man. I mean, uh, sure, it's a great highlight film for recruits at Ohio State when they see that. But man, oh, man, that, I mean, that's one of the ones that makes the, uh, the ESPN. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> calls, you know, uh, that was just. How could somebody be back in the backfield that fast to be getting the quarterback and the running back tackled together? I mean, just. You saw the play. What what happened there, buddy? <laughs> uh, I, we just got manhandled. I mean, that, that's what we used to call it. And, um, you know, to be honest with you, I'm surprised, especially in offense, because we have we have a veteran offensive line. It's not like when I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, when I look across the board, I may miss one. But let's go left to right. You got uh, uh, Wall Rashid on one side, number 53. You have um, Minute at center. Who, who's number 73? He's the left guard. Um, I'll come back to where he's at. And he actually is a solid ball player. He's got three years experience. And then you got uh, C.J. Thorpe, pretty good ball player. And by a lot of, uh, uh, by a lot of, in a lot of rights, by a lot of respects. And you got Will Fries, who's played against people way better than those guys. I mean, we've watched. Some of these people, um, Mike Miranda, that's the left guard. I knew it would come to me. So you you have 53 uh, all coming from left to right. You, know, you have Rashid. You got 
Mike Miranda. You got Menon, who has played against. I mean, I, 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 you know, I'll be honest with you. I mean, Ohio State. They manhandled us, but but by the same token, I don't think they were as good as I thought they were. And you know, with the way this season is going, people are just getting caught up with us. Uh, we could talk about as much misfortune as we have. One thing you have to protect on, on all sides of the ball is competitiveness, and we we tried to get caught up, and we we saw that. We saw it looks like Dotson got three touchdown passes. Um, you know, they're running back, uh, you know, Teague, it looks like 23 carries, 110 yards. Doesn't look so bad. But then, uh, you know, for, for this guy, uh, Fields throws for four touchdowns, 28, 28 and 34. That's quite a rating for 318 yards and four touchdowns. And Clifford, 18 to 30 for 281 yards, three touchdowns and a pick. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, when I look at the numbers, you know, uh, Right. And my I, wife, I, I, I gotta say that and, and, and there's a there's a glimmer of hope here with Penn State because um yeah, we're manhandled, but when I looked at time of possession, you know, it wasn't that too far off. And first downs, you know, we had we were only they had twenty four, we had twenty. Um total yards, yeah, they got us on that end. But you know, considering our mistakes, Penn State stayed as bad as it was, they stayed in it. You know, to get 25. And, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. The competitive part, it really came in, in, in the, you know, when it was too late. We we held up, you know. Um, well, we got, got better, I think, if we went. It just came to, it was way too little, uh, too late, you know. Yeah, well, we weren't a whole lot. We weren't really too sure where we are, where we needed to be. And um, we mentioned it last week. And this just happens with college football all together. I mean, you have people that are, in games, you know, you don't get a, pin, a, a Big Ten game until after like four games. And yeah. you're all of a sudden playing an a improved Indiana team who you should have beaten. Okay, and we, we'll, we'll keep that quiet and we can talk about the last play of the game and all that beyond that. But then against Ohio State, I mean, they marched down the field on us to begin with. They established themselves and you got people that are knocking back defensive linemen to the next level. I mean, it used to be that you're doing a combination block you know in a combination block you're, you're taking the lineman back so you can come off at a certain angle and block that linebacker but the, the poor linebacker didn't have anywhere to go so somehow we've got to look at the source of pride for that group and then we have the players we have people like Shaka Tony in there that's a leader um, and our, our linebackers let me tell you something actually you see the athleticism in them. You see across the board that they can play. Um, I think part of what happened was, you know, I don't think they really knew what to expect. And um, But we've got to get beyond what to expect. And that's the good news about, you know, 38 to 25. And you're right, you know, I mean, as you look at the second half, the second half, actually, we won the second half, okay? So it was uh, Ohio State scored 17 in the second half, and we scored 19. 10 and 7 for Ohio State and then 12 and 7 for us. So we, you know, there's some hope there. It's just that when we start talking about, you know, how things started, let me tell you something. That's no, I don't think it's any for a coach at all because I think the changes that have happened, you know, um, we start taking a look at a uh, few players opted out, injured, and I think we went through all that. But now, these freshmen will have to really grow up that we have, you know. Uh, they're, they're good ball players, you know. When you start to take a look at uh, some of the freshmen that, that that were running, I mean, they 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 had a good game. Sure. You know, uh, and then when you looked at Ohio State, you know, you had another guy, uh, Olave, uh, seven catches for 120 for two touchdowns, and then of course uh, Dotson, you know, eight receptions for 144 yards and three touchdowns, and we. And we had uh, uh, Devin Ford, you know, eight carries, 36 yards. Somehow, like I said, our, our offensive line has got to get started. You know, when, you, when you're going against Ohio State, the last thing you can do is go out there and get cute. You know, and I think that was reflected in how it was being blocked in that play that you mentioned where the guy comes in. The other thing is some people skip from film study, just know the film. I mean, 
Ohio State has a great defensive line. That's uh, I mean, Larry yeah, Johnson. Look at the coaches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ass assistant yeah. head coach, D-line coach. He had them ready, and we all know what his history was. Too. So if he wasn't going to be ready for any game, he'd be ready for that one. Well, yeah. And, well, you know, the, he's helped build that program to what it is today. Um, yeah, yeah. He's done a great job. And, uh, uh, yeah, so that, that speaks volumes. And, you know, it's interesting, uh, you know, a little side note there, Justin Fields. I remember seeing the uh, – the the profile on him through high school and some of his games and stuff playing um interesting guy you know it's it's amazing to see uh a guy like that you put you put in a spotlight all the way through high school right uh, they're recruiting the i mean they, they, they he's had a camera on him all the time and, mm -hmm. and i wish the guy the very best i think he's going to be a great athlete and and I, and I hope that none of that gets to him and i, I know i i can from what I can see, he's got good parents, um, good upbringing. I think his dad's a cop, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, yep. So, so uh, you know, uh, you know, his dad's, you know, his dad probably had a little sit down and talk to him. So, uh, uh, I think, I think this is guy is going to be a guy to watch, and you'll see him in the league for sure. Um, yeah. He's just, he's a great athlete, and uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see where he winds up in, in the league. But uh, you know, he till, but get this, till Penn State, he. He was, uh, you know, he was having. He, Penn State did, defense did frustrate him, and yeah. uh, that that you know they asked him about that, and uh, you know he he was not so sure about what to say because I think Penn State, you know, as I said, they were starting to get his number again. They just came, you know, too little, too late for this one. But I'll tell you, for next week here, I th I think we can definitely you know predict a Penn State win. Uh, against oh, you predicted a Penn State win off the bat. Yeah, I, I'm stepping up here already for this guy. I'm gonna call Penn State win. Now, I looked at who they played, and um, they did have a win over uh, Minnesota last week in overtime, uh, one point. And uh, uh, then you know, and I, I see, uh, and they were at home, but they did have that big loss to Northwestern. So really? I think their programs I th in a place where it, it, you know what, it could actually they could actually be matched up pretty good considering where Penn State's been so far this year um, and what Maryland's been through, I think it's actually going to be a good game. Uh, I, think, I think it's going to be a game Penn State can win. I think it's something they can build upon, uh, you know, for the rest of the season. And, and they're going to need to do that as well because uh, it's, not, it's not going to get any easier here for Penn State as, uh, as the season progresses. No, no, not at all. And it um, looks like Ohio State's got some really impressive stuff you know, uh, they got they got uh, two his little brother as a quarterback. So you know, talented. You know, and right. a name doesn't mean everything. You know, two of the uh, uh, Tagovailoa. You know, he had a great game against Minnesota. He completed seventy four percent of his passes for almost three hundred yards. Ran for fifty nine yards. I think our biggest thing is going to be people will get you know some of the passes against us. The running quarterback. I mean, the biggest thing with the defense is. I'm sure Jimmy would agree is the discipline the defense needs and then get back to where we were last year when we blew Maryland out. Was it like 59 to nothing or something like that? Yeah. Uh, we, we, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, that's still going to be uh, on our minds. Um, yeah. So uh, that, that, last that, year, that, they, yeah they, that, that left a bad taste. Um, oh, it did. It, it did. And, uh, you know, uh, let's see. But yeah, there's the, a there's 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 the difference too, also, you know, uh, and and I, the, I heard ESPN, you know, the guys talking about the difference from a, a whiteout coming to a Beaver Stadium where you hear crickets. I mean, you don't hear anything, but I mean, you can actually hear what's going on. Yeah, and mm -hmm. they talked about that, you know, when going into the to the Penn State student section end zone, um, and and what a difference it probably made for an opponent. And uh, you know, again, it's going to be a, be crickets up here come. Uh, Saturday afternoon. Great day for football coming up. I mean, uh, about 70 degrees out. Uh, you know, fantastic weather for a game on Saturday up here. And I think that's what's great. And I, and I tell you, a game who that's like, and again, Skip, you might have a different opinion, but I guess we have to figure out how offense is going to be. I mean, Clifford's a tough kid. Um, a lot of the predictions say it's a great day for him to run all the time. And again, I'm okay with it, but I like him to sit in the pocket every now and then and have a solid game for the pocket, you know, and then. Well, that'd be nice that my concern is, and like I say, everyone had time, right? 
Well, it's it's that, and you know, the type of offense where you run is making this quarterback vulnerable. For, you know, again, more vulnerable for an in- injury. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd like to see us be able to run the football. And the way things are going right now, man, I mean, it's uh, if there's going to be a run game, it's got to be him trying to get out of trouble. Um. <laughs> we, we really can't rely on that, you know. I mean, no, 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 because they're gonna they're gonna just gonna put a guy up there and have him on him every play, and um, and that's that's gonna put that pressure on him. And you will we'll, we'll find out whether he's gotten any better at passing or not because in reading, uh, because if they do that, he, if he reads well, he can find a guy. But uh, let's hope he can pass accurately. So, uh, yeah, I mean that's, and I think he can. You know, I think. I think there's the issue is going to be how they play Friar moves. I mean, obviously Friar moves with three catches last week. It sounds like that the, the other teams are taking away the tight end for the most part and taking their chances. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. I can't blame a team for doing that. Uh, I, if I was going against the Penn State um, coaching defense wise, I, I'd be coming every play. I'd be teaching my, my my team would be learning man defense. And occasionally we may, we may switch to a zone, but other than that, we're going to be going man all the time and mm-hmm. be an attacking type of defense because because you really you want to find out how good their line is and how good their quarterback is, and there's only one way to do that, and that's by, by yeah. stopping somebody. So um, yeah, but of course the vulnerable thing about man is is where the quarterback gets to run. You know, people are right. telling yep. how they have their assignments. They the linebackers are, are going to their drops. And then, uh, you know, other people have their back to the quarterback, so you don't know what's going on. Right. By the time he's, you say he's going, he's, he's already got 70 yards. So That's right. That's right. And there's a prediction. I'm trying to see where it's from. Uh, College Football News says Penn State is going to win big, and they, oh, they, they say okay. 47 to 16, which is okay. interesting. Wow. I, I don't know if it'll be that big. I, I think it'd be maybe like a – I'd say like a 35 to 21. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know something, and I and I would say so. Uh, and that and that, but the difference is the twenty one would be doing cleanup time. You know, I, I think we should we should handle it. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Maryland got great athletes. We know what Maryland has been through. We know their their program uh, has gone through some coaches. We know that uh, you know there were some things about the danger and. How they were running their practices and all, and they had some other things happen. So they had a player pass away. So you have a program that not only has something to prove, they had to do a lot doing a, doing the recruiting for The coach seems like a pretty good guy as well. You know, he just wants things to uh, to go well for him. But uh, but I, I mean, you know, looking at uh, what we see from Tua, looking at their line, all the years we played Maryland, Skip. I mean, it was always about, I would say. They always had great athletes, but we were better fundamentally. Yeah. And they, they may have even been a little bit better in the weight room. You got more people. Because I watched the 1985 Maryland. I, I think I hurt my knee that game. But I watched that game, uh, and I look at it, and you see even the, the coaches, man, they're all – you could see they're all got the hawking chest. And yeah. Playing against all yeah. these guys. But when it came down to the athleticism and – what we were doing. I mean, it was, you know, we, we beaten them in some close games. You know, we, when we played, they never beat us. They finally beat us uh, m- much later, years later. In fact, maybe what, when Stefan Diggs was uh, at Maryland, that was the last time they won. Other than that, it's been like tie game and all. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward also to the secondary locking some things down because you still got people like Lamont Wade, again, who's a veteran who I want to see a little bit more out of. I, I mean, not, and I don't mean just making plays but veteran leadership in the back. And I'm sure that if you talk to one of the coaches, they, they, they're thinking so. And, of course, uh, um, uh, Castro Fields, you know, I'd like this number five. I'd like to see him um, take the veteran leadership as well. And then trying to find out who is going to be the person. And I don't want to say the next Micah Parsons, but who is that guy? Who's the number 13? You know, I think he he's out there. So what what what, what are we going to do? with our linebacking core, you know, Brandon Smith is a sophomore. So we're young, but you know what? We can't say we're young anymore when we're 0-2. I remember Joe said that when we, after the year after we won the championship. We can't, and we weren't young. We had all the chance, you know, we had a lot of the players back and we had great, great players. And we started off 0-3, you know, that, that's what kind of this reminds me of. Um, 
except we had on our backs and everything else. And we were, people just were beyond the allure because Joe told them, you know, in the first, in the, in the first staff, uh, staff meeting, in the first squad meeting, I should say, that uh, he knows that last season was a great season. He said, that, you know, I got it to give rings just like yours. It's a beautiful ring, but I don't even wear it because we got to have something else to prove. So I think if we can get them to focus, meaning the, the, you know, Penn State, focus on what's going on the rest of the season. You know, everybody speculates a whole lot of different things. Leave Coach Franklin alone. Let the man coach. Yeah. And, you know, and I would like to see the leaders enforce those type of things. I think that's where that's where I just – it was hard for me to see where the leadership might be. I think that some a lot of stuff had to do with the dominance up front, but there's got to be somebody up front that just doesn't let it happen again. You know, Matt Kisner would, would say, you know, uh, somebody beat you like, Dag, man, I'm sorry, man. He said, ah, just don't let it happen again. I want to punch him in his head. <laughs> and he was absolutely right. Just don't yeah. let it happen again. You know, don't worry about it. That's wild. That's yeah. wild. Yeah, I mean, I, and looking at it and, uh, you know, getting the extra type of stuff, watching Blair make the carries and, and watching Quintus McDonald uh, mature and, you know, watching, you you know, the great maturation and, and, and the rise of uh, Roger – Rogers Alexander. I don't know if you how much you watched Rogers. Rogers was just just a tremendous linebacker in so many ways, and he was only like 190 pounds even yeah. then. Man, I was like 190, and, but you know he is. But, but again, it was Roger could take over a game mentally, and people wouldn't know. They're thinking it's all the other people in the secondary. No, it was his his way of playing linebacker, which was a little different. You know that athletic style. People weren't talking about that. I mean, Roger could cover people he's in with coverage with the wide receiver the, you know wide receivers and other things the question is are we too you know joe used to talk about you can't be too afraid to find out how good you are i think that's what this week is going to be about yeah it's going to be a great game and i look forward to it. great weather uh uh you know fun fun saturday uh you can't you can't ask for a better opportunity up here for guys to be able to perform so let's hope it happens and uh, it's, it's too bad uh, Yakov couldn't catch us tonight, and uh, hopefully uh, he and his family are well. And again, uh, you know, we trust for uh, uh, the medical things going on with these uh, our friends and families to go well. It's a it's a very uh, precarious time we live in. We have uh, a lot of unrest in so many different ways in so many of our lives. Um, but hey, you know, uh, the Lord's good. He's going to take care of us. He's going to care for everybody here. And, uh, can't wait to uh, uh, be able to talk about some more Penn State football here next week because here in the midst of all this stuff, you know, it's so nice to have a day like this where I can come and uh, talk Penn State football with you guys. And, uh, you know, yeah. we got, we got, we're blessed in so many ways, despite all the madness out there in this world. It's just a nice to be able to kind of step away and let that go for a little while. Just, just uh, enjoy sport. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, one of the things we see is we just, I mean, we got great young men, and you still see it. The young men are great; they want to work. So, and again, this did. I'm sure the people before us said the same thing, you know. But that was a thing. Like I do wear this this championship ring on, Skip, but nobody talks about when we were 0-3 in 1983. We were, and let me tell you something: we barely escaped Philadelphia with a win at Vet Stadium over Temple. We escaped with that one, right? You know, because we ended up. Who did we start off with? The first ever kickoff classic, you know, we end up yeah. losing four, four to six. Yeah, yeah, I was happy. I'm thinking to myself, um, you know, they have all these people, you know, they got Irvin Fryer, they got Mike Rozier, Turner Gill, uh, 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 Dean Steinkuhler. Nah, we'll beat them. Oh, yeah. And a lot of that was, yeah. was mental, you know. You, yeah, you, sure. you, know you, you had Nebraska, then we go back to, uh, you know, Beaver Stadium and we, we play a, a whale of a game, a shootout. And lose to Iowa, you know, and then to make things worse, we lose to, you know, to a team that was not on a national scene yet. University of Cincinnati, we get shut out 14 nothing. Yeah. You know, so, so I, I, and we had the people, we had the players, but it was the people within the locker room that really had to turn it around. Yeah. You know, you get the best of times, you get the worst of times. Uh, the unique part about college football, you just don't know what's going to come about any given week with any team, especially now with, uh, it's amazing. I think it's still amazing that these teams are able to keep their players in the bubbles that they have uh, to to be, remain eligible to play. 
was again a Big Ten putting a guy out for 21 days. Yeah. I mean, well, again, as we said last week, Skip, when you have two college presidents, I mean, they're lucky to have a season. When you have two college presidents in the Big Ten that are epidemiologists, you have to prove them a lot. That's going to be sick. Um, well, and we'll uh, see, I thought about you, know, you telling me that. I remember you telling me that. And then after the show, I thought, well, you know what? Wait a second. They may be, they may be epidemiologists, okay? But they're also politically minded, too. So. Yeah, let's, let's not go there, okay? <laughs> and, 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 and that can influence the way they think and the way they, well, they want to implement but, but, he, but, he, but here's the here's the truth, though. It's very difficult to have the season you want when things change so much. I mean, and since you, you're putting it out there, I mean, I'm a person doing contact tracing. People don't realize what it takes to actually do contact tracing. You know, unfortunately, I have people that are in the mud. They're in the trenches doing oh, yeah. all those other things. So well, it's difficult I, even on your, you got to go through with what you have to do for your job, man. I mean, well, uh, and that's what my job has changed. But even on your best day, you know, and, and you know, and, and again, it's politically minded stuff all the time. But it's hard to tell people what safety is because everybody's disputing it, you know. And, and sometimes well, you just got to tell people what the rules are, you know, because what you what you do is, especially when you're in quarantine and other things, people are good. And there's some people that break their quarantine and they end up other places, but it's just when you're at something that has a small gathering or a gathering of more than maybe 20, 25 people, it's just, it's hard to follow who was with who was with who for oh. more than 15 minutes. I mean, when you start thinking about that, it's not about high-fiving somebody and getting COVID. It's about you being around somebody for a significant time. And oh, yeah. With somebody, yeah, so it's, it's tough. But you know, my thing is, my issue with uh, still, I, I like college football. My issue from what I saw is, is still the quality to me. And, and that was my, my point. And a lot of parents called, uh, you know, you need to have the quality is not up to where it used to be. I, oh. mean, I, 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 I could see that people didn't play in the spring. Yeah. I could see there could have been much of a, much of a, uh, a summer camp or preseason. You, you can see it. I mean, right. people are competing. I, that's what I see. And I like that. But when we start looking at the offensive line, I know our, our and I'm not making any excuses. I know our offensive line is better than what I saw on Saturday. Yeah, I know it. Well, you know, uh, Lord willing, uh, sooner rather, hopefully rather later, vaccines will be out. Hopefully this all can be put behind us. We can all try to get back to some type of normalcy in, in our lives and our work and what we're doing. Uh, I'm really hoping that can happen because uh, yeah, this, this, is, this is hard on a lot of people in a lot of ways. I'm, yeah. Apart from football, um, I, I know people. Um, I have, you know, people that that are working. You know, that I didn't know were hurting as bad as they were. That are working. That wanted work from me to work for me. And I'm like, well, gee, if I'd have known you needed more work, I had plenty of it available for you. You know, it's yeah. hard to find good people. You know, and yeah. And, uh, so, uh, as a businessman, I, I and I, I a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, here I'm I'm liquidating businesses. You know, that are that have been put under because of this. And uh, I was talking uh, to my attorney today and, and we were talking about how just things are barely holding on and, and at our brink here. And hopefully something can give here sooner or later, later because uh, there's a lot of people out there hurting. And, and I think the nice part people really like about the sports because you know, the politics is all gonna be soon over here, however it turns out, but People are tired of hearing. There's just so much controversy about so many things. People love to turn on a game and be able to tune out from all that. Just if it's just for a few hours a week, yeah. enjoy just watching some college ball and the yeah. team you like and the guys and people you like, and not have none of that stuff brought back up to you. So no, no it, it's true. I, I think what I'm saying is is just that the quality part. Is, is the part that's big for me, you know, when sure, I, sure. You know, I always say, if you're going to do it right, you know, do it, you know, and uh, they, we look at some of the professional sports leagues, and like you said, they've been in a bubble, and a bubble is, is, is fine, you know, we, we've done that, and they have to be with themselves and quarantine, and, um, but it's, it's very difficult to get up to speed on certain, on certain things, so I mean, we'll see what happens, um, I'm looking forward to a, a big Big win, coach. And listen, I know you, coach. If somehow you get this, we're 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 with you, we're with you, your staff. 
we're only saying, uh, I'm only saying the things that I know. I just know we're better. And, and I think you realize, you know, the way we played, I'm sure coach got everything out of them. Now I think the rest of the season, they've got to turn themselves to why should they lose to anybody else? We even saw what happened to Michigan. Michigan goes out and oh, yeah. loses to Michigan State, you know, and, and then you think Rutgers is going to give a better game than what they get, you know, because they beat Michigan State and uh, they don't do very well, you know, so it's 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 difficult. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what comes up with Clemson this week, too. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Clemson doesn't have their quarterback. And yeah, have yeah. Their other There's a lot of shaking down. There's going to be some shaking down. And, yeah, and, and he's the one that, and, and you know what I forgot, Skip? I forgot about Notre Dame finally going to a conference that totally got burned. The, 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 the ACC. Yeah, the yeah, that, that is a, a surprise uh, as well. That, that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, I talked to the, my, my friend uh, Dan Morris played for Florida State, and uh, uh, I know Dan, for, uh, you know, professionally in, in the business world, but also it's great talking about him. But man, those guys are hurting down there <laughs> at Florida State. But uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun, buddy. Even though the the qual, like you say, the quality may not be there like we were used to seeing. I'm just glad to be seeing some ball. I miss being able to go up to see some practices. And actually, I miss seeing my, my friends up in the side. I have running the sidelines for the games and practices yeah. and all that. But, uh, you know, that'll all get back to normal here, hopefully sooner rather than later. And I, I can appreciate what Coach is doing uh, for uh, protecting the players, keeping them safe um, and everything yeah. possible. He, he's doing everything right by everybody. And, uh, you know, all we can do is, you know, uh, wish them all the best and uh, back them up, support them and everywhere we can. So, yeah, health and health and safety. And that's my final, you know, assistant vice president uh, for student health and safety. That's the bottom line. You know, even the people who can't pr play, they're practicing and they're trying to get the most out of them. So you, we finally see what, what comes up. And like I said, it's just, it's true. It's difficult not to question certain things when a, a bunch of things are happening, but you know, that conversation is not for this show. We're just looking no. at the um, consider that Clemson, it says, has built up so much capital it can afford to lose this game. You know, it, it, you know, it, it, if then it turns out to win, there's a possibility with so they they, they could have a possibility with a rematch with Notre Dame. So sure. again, Notre Dame in a conference championship game, and they, they look awfully good. Yeah, yeah, they they are play, they're playing. Uh, they have some quality ball going on there. So yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, one of the fastest hours of college football, buddy. It goes quick. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it all up here today. Any any closing parting comments? Um, I mean, for me, uh, I'm looking forward to, obviously, uh, well, we'll talk about the game. First of all, everybody being safe, number one. Um, and number two, I think we're at a point that we have to grow up in every area that we are, and we have to expect a little bit more from ourselves early, you know, uh, my mother always said, go out there and expect to do well. Because, you know, I was one of those people who used to overthink things. Look, guys, this week, come on, don't overthink it. Play what you're going to play. Play your gaps. Slam down that run. That's the biggest thing we got to do is shut down the run. On the other end, open up that run. You all do what you have to do on the offensive line. And then let's let's get Pat Fryer move. Let's get him to eat some more so, so the other wideouts and the other folks can eat some more, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Richardson, I think his name is, then you have, um, then you have Dodson. So I'm really looking forward to a much bigger game and this being the start of the, the Penn State season where we see what Penn State really is about this week. Don't worry right. about the rankings, go out there and win the game. Couldn't say any better, buddy. My, my words are, you know, let's start to have some fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that, you're starting to enjoy it. You know, learn your you learn your lessons now. Let's have some fun. So, okay. mm -hmm. and we get, we have plenty to work with. I mean, what the good part about the loss is everybody says it's not good as Joe says. You're not as good as you are when you think you win. Bad as you are when you think you lost, and you're not as bad as we were because when you look at it and you win the second half, you know you think about how things should be. But I think having fun will be the most important. I've always played better when I had fun. When I was under a lot of stress, I didn't didn't do well. Nah, it's hard to do it. So I hope these guys can have some fun this week. Uh, okay. do, and, we got, and, we, and we got a good kicking game that should yeah, come to fruition. Yeah. yeah, coming along. Definitely coming along. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we just keep on getting better, buddy. We keep getting better. Right. 
And uh, hopefully next week we'll get uh, get uh, uh, Jimmy back on here. We can get your cove on and we'll pick it back up. So uh, so on behalf of uh, the, the big dude here, my name is Skip Roberts. We want to thank you all for coming on tonight to Lions Live. We'll catch you on next week and uh, we'll stream it live again here. Do it all over again, buddy. Uh, thanks, everybody. Y'all have a great night. Lord bless. And we'll do it, do it again. All right. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome.